Koit, everyone. Uh, I'm Christy Progri. I have finished uh, my studies for international affairs and diplomacy. I'm currently the chairwoman of uh, local hover space that we have back in my hometown, Tirana. Uh, I'm a Mozilla rep, I'm a Mozilla outreach intern, and also a tech speaker. Uh, and I'm Yona. I'm a business informatics student at the University of Tirana. Uh, also, together with Christy, we are Open Labs board member. As you can see uh, from my head, I'm also part of Fedora. I'm uh, an ambassador and also a FAMSCO member. But meanwhile, I'm also part of other open source communities like uh, TDF, for example, that I'm TDF member, the Document Foundation, and also part, uh, let's say, diversity team core member at uh, Fedora project. Uh, in the first part of our talk, we're going to start to how to build up the Python community. It's uh, mostly from our personal experiences. We have taken a community from only like two or three people and now it's a very active one with around 50 members and every day that passes, it's a big success for us. Uh, so is here anyone who knows this guy in the picture? Okay, so yeah, I think it's, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he has been the leader of Albania for, um, for around six years. I will just like uh, start uh, this presentation with, with a little bit of history. So in this way you can understand uh, what really influenced the community and uh, what really matters is also the, the social part of it, like the society. Uh, we have been in the communism system for around <laughs> 50 years and it has been like quite a hard time. Uh, and only in the beginning of 90s, we changed the political system from the communism to a democratic one. And as in 90s, as I mentioned, uh, the communism system failed and uh, we are uh, in the democratic system, at least that's what they say. And uh, this really uh, influences a lot, a lot in the way that people see a community. From our previous um, experience, our parents, they used to think that, well, if you go in a community, you don't really, like, you don't really take anything for yourself. You're just like, they have all the background that they had in the communism system. So it's very hard to explain to them sometimes that working in a group of people and working in a community makes the things work and makes the things like easier <laughs> and it can be really a very successful case. Uh, since the, uh, the, the system changed, also the perspective a change within the people now it's uh, the society has uh, gone to an extreme individualism that we are facing every day which only which people like take care of for themselves and how they they can success in different fields of um, of the life in a country with a cooperative way of working background collaborative software development should be easy right but sometimes it's not it's not and this is one of the cases that you have started to like uh, really um, empower and to contribute in our, even in our local hackerspace. Uh, we have Open Labs. Uh, it started its uh, hackerspace, which started like in 2012. Uh, it was a very new concept for Albanian people. What was the, what's an open software? All they basically know was just like Windows, some basics of, you know, Word and not much. And it was like so hard in the beginning to let them know that, hey, here is a community that really needs you and really needs everyone to contribute to make it bigger and to make it more successful. And one of the uh, um, groups that we have in our community beside like Mozilla, Fedora, Linux, OpenStreetMap and other projects, we have also p p people who are working with Python and the group of people that they are like contributing every day, write co write, writing codes and creating new software. Um, culture proposals for making benefit of newborn communities of Python. There are a lot of uh, reasons and cases on how to empower a community. Uh, first of all, it's physical space. It's very important to have a physical uh, space for everyone to come and to join and to get to know people that they share the same uh, ideology on something and they really want to contribute. Uh, also the regional cross-border collaborative it's a very it's a very good opportunity also you can uh, get to know other communities not like even local ones 
and this really helps you to share experiences and to see what works in a community and what doesn't work and how to improve it. Uh, there should be a very good balance between the paid staff and the volunteer because when sometimes when money like goes in the things like kind of to become start to become a little bit messy because it's it's a very tricky it's a very tricky field and uh, it, it's it's very like you really need to be very careful when it comes to the payment uh, no gender balance in the community when see a community for example that is only like full of men it's not sometimes very comfortable for women to come and to start contributing since they will think that they don't really belong here so if you want to have a healthy community we should have a very we should have a healthy gender balance within it there are great resources out there like wiki that um, it's a very good opportunity also to get to know what are the projects involved and how to start like contributing on them uh, localizations also it, it, it doesn't matter to just like write codes and to start like with really hard stuff for the beginners but there there are also easy tests like for example translating a software into your local language which is a very very good start to to contribute on on the open source community collaborate and uh, communicate with similar with similar communities nearby it's very important for example in albania we have a very good communication with even other organizations that are uh, in the Balkans, like for example, you know, with Kosovo, with the Greek communities. Um, since we, we share like somehow the same historical background, this helps us to understand things even like clearer and to see how a community can go better in the future. Uh, documentation is a very good uh, way and it really has a huge impact to, to make the community grow day by day. And also design is, in our opinion, is a very, is a big must for everyone to have a good uh, brand. Um, uh, most important research for cultural elements are highly influence the community positively or, or negatively, like high individualist or, um, oriented society. Do really, uh, this really affects a lot on how you start to build up a community. like when you have a, when your society is very individual oriented you have to really work hard to let them know that working in a collaborative way and working in communities uh, really influences in a very positive way all the work within it so yona is going to talk about the women in uh, open source communities Okay, so now Christy was telling us how to build up a Python community, so or a new community. But if you see this community, and mostly the tech ones, uh, you can see that they don't have lots of women. So where are women in these communities? So if we see a survey that it's done on 2002, uh, you can see that only 1.1% 1 .1 uh, of them uh, were women. And a lay survey that was uh, done in 2013, uh, the number was increased mm -hmm. and it was like 11% of the women that are contributors. And from this 11% of the women, only 1.5% of them are developers. That it's really uh, bad when you hear uh, this, this number. And if you see the GitHub users, you can see that only 5.4% uh, uh, of them have more than 10 contributions. So it's just a random example that, uh, that was taken from the top down the website. But uh, if you see this um, uh, uh, here, you can see that uh, the girls that uh, have done more than, uh, have been part, let's say, of uh, different reposi repositories and they have done contributions there, those who, have, who has more than 10, uh, they just disappear, but what, what uh, are these reasons? And mostly, you know that uh, when uh, different companies, I'm talking in general, when they see that uh, contributions are made uh, by uh, girls uh, on GitHub, let's say, um, they, they will see it better because they, they will be like really sure that <coughs> they will have mistakes, but it's not the same thing with with boys. So this is kind of discrimination, let's say, for them. 
And if we see the Python uh, conferences that, uh, that they are done, uh, you can see that on 2011 uh, speakers, only 1% of them were women. And if you see the other one, the later one, for example, the 2012, you can see that were 7% women. And uh, the other one on 2013, you can see that attendees were 20% uh, of them were women and the speakers were 15% uh, of them uh, women. <clears throat> and the later one on 2014, uh, we had 33% uh, of them women and speakers were 33% uh, women. And uh, the later one, on 2015, uh, they had 33% uh, women. So you can see that the number is increasing uh, every year. So, <coughs> so I hope that this number will be increased uh, each year. But what, so we see that we don't have uh, many women as part of this community. So we can agree that we have some issues here. So where, uh, which are the problems? So we have invisibility. Sometimes in communities or uh, spaces, uh, people pretend like the girls that are coders, let's say, they pretend that they are not there. Uh, they pretend like they are only boys and they really know how to code and they can talk related to advanced things. But on the other hand, we have exceptionalism. So when they see girls that are part of the community, they say, whoa, that's a girl, so she can code? That also, uh, let's say, it's not really good for us to hear uh, these opinions or statements that boy can make, boys can make. On the other hand, we have also the gender exceptionalism and social expectation, uh, that means that we are in a community that sometimes people think that girls are better at social things, promoting stuff, marketing, but they are not really good at coding, developing, or the technical things. And also we have the sexualized environment. So when they see a girl that are part of a tech company, they will think, okay, how she's dressing or other stuff and not uh, ask them or uh, let's say, uh, see their technical background. Uh, but what uh, different open source communities, uh, what have they done? We have different initiatives that they really want to support women so they can be part of these communities. So, for example, the first one is WOMOS, uh, that Christy is part of it, and she can, can tell us more about Yeah. Um, WOMOS is like <coughs> Women Plus Mozilla. It's a community composed of members from different open source projects. It's mainly dedicated to improving women's uh, visibility and involvement in free open source and Mozilla and to increase the number of women within the, within the community. And uh, it's open to everyone who wants to, pers to participate and who shares the same ideology to, to be in the community. Um, in which, which is open source and to increase the number of women there. Um, if you want to, to have more information related to this, uh, we have our own website, womos.org, uh, that in, you can find us on Telegram in the mailing list or uh, in if you are living in a country that there are some rep, Mozilla reps there, you can just go directly and ask them and I'm pretty sure that they will give you <coughs> more information related to to the WOMOS. So another initiative is the one that we have at Fedora, uh, Fedora Women. Uh, so at Fedora Women, we have our mission uh, statement for this group. So we provide a forum for women in the Fedora community. So we have a dedicated, let's say, mailing list, IRC channel uh, to communicate with girls and ask them uh, how they can be part of the community. Because sometimes for us, it's better to to talk with a girl how to be part of the community and contribute there, then ask <laughs> boys because sometimes they, they are afraid that they will make statements like, okay, you don't know, for example, how to code on C++ or uh, on Python. So to avoid this part, uh, that's why we have uh, provided a forum for them. So the other one is we provide a stronger voice for the women on the, of the Fedora community. So if you feel discriminated or if you don't feel, uh, if you uh, are part of any uh, issue that you are facing at the community, you can just speak up and uh, tell your problem. So don't keep it uh, for yourself. 
And uh, also we have avoid segregation. So of course that we have a separated forum only for women, but this does not mean that we want to be uh, two separated parts. So boys on the, uh, on the one part of it and the other part can be b uh, girls. No, we want uh, both of them can, uh, let's say, collaborate with each other and understand uh, each other, how they can uh, be uh, and help them for different kind of uh, contributions that they can do at the community. And what's the most important thing? You need to have fun. So Fedora Women is open to any uh, woman who is looking for a supportive group uh, within the Fedora community. And for this reason, uh, involvement uh, with uh, our project, whether, whether uh, uh, as a user or a contributor, uh, it's strong, is strongly encouraged. But I was talking only for women, but we want to have also an inclusive community. So we cannot be focused only uh, on women. We have also other underrepresented groups. That's why we have the diversity team. Uh, those are people that are part of the core member of the diversity team. And if you want to communicate with us, uh, we have our mailing list that it's our primary, let's say, way how uh, you can find us or you can contribute to different tickets that we have to our uh, Pajur uh, that uh, we can file different tickets related to different tasks uh, if you want to be involved. And also you can join our B-weekly meetings uh, every Wednesday uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, on Fedora Diversity Channel in Freenode. Uh, but beside this, uh, because we have different uh, diversity teams, let's say, or groups that are only for women in different open source communities, we have also initiatives or, or uh, let's say, opportunities that these projects ha have done together. So uh, the first one is the GNOME Outreach Program for Women. Uh, that it's an internship uh, for every uh, women uh, and other people or let's say other under, under representative groups uh, that they feel discriminated or and uh, it's um, an internship that uh, lots of uh, open source communities are part of it uh, for example uh, Fedora as you can see Fedora, GNOME, Wikipedia or Mozilla uh, as Christy said, she's also an outreach intern uh, at Mozilla, so she can is explain better also uh, how is the process that every girl can be part of it and contribute. And also it's a paid one, so maybe this is a, a good reason to make them uh, be part of it and apply. So um, it's very important to have, like, to have been contributing in the open source for quite a long time so they can see that you're like you had you have a big impact on your on what you're doing and a big, big impact in the uh, community uh, you can first like uh, start to see what is the project that you think that you can contribute and that you feel very well with uh, in the first uh, in the first view that you see for example that you your skills fit very well with uh, what is Mozilla for example are offering for the outreach intern you can uh, start to communicate with the mentors on the IRC mostly, and they can uh, help you out then on how to continue to contribute and to have uh, to have a bigger impact and to start also applying for the outreach. And in this way, you can uh, win the you, you can win the internship. And it depends on the project. Uh, mm -hmm. Some projects can uh, approve uh, more. Uh, girls that are part of it and some for example at Fedora only one girl can be part of it but at Mozilla they have yeah, even more 15. Yeah right? there are a lot of opportunities and if there will be anyone here who wants to have more information related to this just feel free to contact. And uh, another one it's Google Summer of Code. I guess uh, all of you know about it so I will skip a bit because I don't know how I will split the time. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's say that students can work with an open source organization uh, on a three month programming project during their uh, break from school. So you can apply uh, with the project uh, and uh, uh, those who are accepted, uh, they will spend their, com uh, their summer, uh, let's say, coding. And uh, at the end, of course, that they, they will share uh, all uh, and submit their code that they have done. So, I mean, we are open source communities. That's why we need to share. Sharing is caring. 
And another uh, one is Rails Girls, uh, Rails Girls Summer of Code. Uh, this week was also the deadline to apply for it. Uh, you can have different teams there also that you can be a part of them. For example, these are, these are uh, some of them. Um, for example, I uh, applied for Nextcloud uh, that it's uh, similar, let's say, with Dropbox or Google Drive, but it's an alternative that it's open source. Uh, then the <coughs> you can find, uh, okay, we are we're, uh, with the Python community, that's why we, uh, one of the examples is this one, for Asia Open Event, uh, that it's an uh, event manager for a platform to organize all kinds of events that you can do, conferences, for example, that speaker can uh, uh, register there and uh, can put their information. So uh, you need to be a team with another girl that is a, a local person at your city so you can meet each other uh, every day uh, and if you you need also a mentor that can be uh, of the pr uh, project that you will uh, choose. Uh, also you need at least two coaches for each project and uh, the maximum of the teams that you can join uh, is two teams. And also the winners will get a three months of internship uh, that will start uh, on the end of June and will end uh, on September. Uh, so I was talking uh, about different communities uh, in general, but uh, let's, see, let's see how is the situation in our community in uh, Albania. So this one is a group photo uh, of OSCAIL, uh, that it's uh, our biggest conference there, uh, open source conference in Albania, uh, where we have different speakers from abroad uh, to uh, talk about different uh, topics that they want to cover, uh, related only to open source, of course. And uh, if you see uh, the participants, uh, we can see that 70% uh, of them are women, that <coughs> it's really rare if you see open source communities in general. And also uh, part of the organizing team, uh, we were 80% of them uh, were girls and uh, the volunteers, 80% uh, of them were girls too. Uh, so this is another event that we've done there. Uh, it, it's Ada, Ada Lovelace Day. So each year we organize uh, at the same day. So we organize an event at our hackerspace where different girls can uh, present a topic that they want to cover so they can share uh, their experience with the others and maybe why not to, to inspire them. And this one is Mozilla Weekend. Uh, so uh, today is related on only to Mozilla browser, uh, Firefox browser. Uh, and here the photo, uh, we've, we have separated them, let's say. And as you can see, we, yeah, we were, let's say, 70% or 65% of them were uh, women. Uh, so this is another group photo that we've done at our hackerspace. Um, was at a Lovelace Day again. Uh, this one, it's uh, a meetup that we've done for Fedora because at Fedora we have another initiative that it's uh, Fedora Loves Python. Uh, so this one was the first one uh, that we've done there and uh, we had also Yanis, the Federal Ambassador in Greece, uh, that he came uh, there to share with us uh, his experience. And as you can see from the photo, <coughs> we have lots of girls too. So uh, this one, so at the end of the conference, uh, we talk with the speakers so they can give us a testimonial, what they think about the conference. And one of them said that Oscar showed how girls can rock IT subjects and that free software is a socially important and empowering topic for everyone. So uh, what are the main reasons that we have lots of girls part of uh, our hackerspace? So it's the educational system uh, because when we finish our high school, we have, uh, because how is the, um, we have the educational system there, we, uh, we need to get lots of points to get the universities and those that are related to IT, they have lots of, lots of and uh, girls take lots of points so they see which one to choose and mostly uh, lately, let's say, they choose, for example, business informatics that I'm studying or IT or, but something related to IT in general. 
So another reason is the desire to discover new things. Uh, so they want to explore um, another field uh, that it's IT and is developing every day, let's say. And they see this as a field where they can easily find a job, of course, because they need a good salary. So how can we encourage women to have more women uh, part of different uh, open source communities? So we need to recruit diversity. As I said, uh, now we have different um, groups inside of different open source projects that promote diversity in general. That's what we need to do uh, for, let's say, each of them. Uh, we need to create the code of conduct. Uh, it's really important. So every project can have their own code of conduct. So if someone will feel uh, discriminating or feel bad because someone will uh, say a bad word toward them, uh, they can know and they can tell them that, hey, you are against code of conduct here. So, And of course, you need to value all the contributions. It doesn't matter if it's coding, it's promoting, it's translating. Uh, all of them, uh, they are working really hard uh, to promote the software in general. So you just need to say thank you to all of them. And of course, that uh, you need to organize events or conferences. Uh, so they can be part of it and they are can, uh, can enjoy their experiences and can get ins inspired, let's say. So thank you. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask now or you have also our emails there. Thank you. Based on research, women are more prone to experience imposter syndrome. Any suggestion for helping them overcome or fight from obvious praise of good work? Uh, yeah, we have we have also faced that in the beginning in our community. Sometimes it's really hard to to let them know and to 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 make them feel like with a high self-esteem related to their to their IT job or to their contributions. But um, on my experience, like I only I always say that practice makes us perfect. Like it's very important to always keep trying and to always keep contributing. And what's important is that if to, to remember always that why did they all started this? For example, like we have also very good examples in our community that uh, there have been cases where women came and they were trying. Uh, to leave because they might have been like, probably I'm not capable enough to cover an IT, you know, talk or to cover a technical problem, but they have kept going on since we're a lot of women and we always used to talk to each other and to support each other. Like in my personal experience, it's very it, like practicing and experience makes a very big, like has, has a very big influence on this. Uh, what is the gender ratio ratio sure. in your meetups? Well, it's always more women. It's always, no matter of the like. It kind doesn't. The, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a technical event or no. Yeah, it's always more yeah. women there. And uh, how do you fight ag um, against women exceptionalism in community? Thing. Well, I don't think we have to fight <laughs> for it. At no. least at our community in yeah. Albania. But, for example, if you see the community in general, the, that we are also part of them, let's mm -hmm. say one of them, for example, was the code of conduct. So if people see that they are against of it, um, I mean, you will do something as a community to, uh, to see people that, hey, you need to respect it. Also, uh, let's say that people nowadays, they are uh, trying to to be uh, nicer to girls, so it's not that we have this exceptionalism really yeah, you know, obvious, yeah. let's say, part of our communities. But as I said, if someone at our community will feel bad or something, they, they can just speak up and 
of course, that we will find a solution about it because it depends of the, the okay. different issues. So. Okay, thank you very much uh, for building the community. And uh, I think if you don't have any questions, we can uh, thank you once mm -hmm. again. Thank you.